we're going to install the trigger guard plate. We're going to leave this screw and this screw loose so that we can have some wiggle room to line up the hammer, the trigger guard plate with the hammer pivot screw. There's a couple of things we need to be concerned with here. The screw that goes here is the longer screw. The screw that goes here is the short screw. Put the long screw here. Leave it loose. The short screw goes here. it up a little bit to get the thread started. Give that a little bit of wiggle. There we go. There we go. Okay, leave both those screws loose. If you don't leave them loose, you won't be able to get the hammer pivot screw in. Okay. Bring the hammer in from the top. Okay. Push the trigger stop safety in. Push the hammer to the rear and bring your hammer in. Okay, I like to try to get everything started with a punch. Kind of get things lined up a little bit. If I can. Take your hammer, pivot screw, and run her on down. Okay, leave it a little bit loose because we still have to tighten these guys up. I like to alternate between the three screws before I get them all snugged down. You run all, one all the way down, you won't be able to run the other ones down. Now we can check the operation of the hammer sear. I like to do that in case I have something misaligned. Okay, push the hammer stop safety in, trigger fully rearward. Set the hammer block safety to fire. Push the hammer all the way to the resting position. Release the trigger. Now we're going to bring it back to the half cock. Sear. There, just clicked into the half cock sear. That's good. Now we're going to bring it to the full cock sear. We should hear it click there also. There, that's the full cock sear. It means our sears are engaging properly. Now, the next thing we're going to do is 
put the hammer spring and hammer spring adjusting plate on. You need to move the hammer to the resting position. Push the trigger stop safety in. Push the trigger to the rear. Bring the hammer fully forward. That will allow us to put the spring, hammer spring, and the hammer adjusting plate on a little bit easier. It releases some of the tension into this spring so we don't have to fight it. Now I'm going to turn this over because I've got to push the hammer spring adjusting plate on. Now what I do so I catch a corner of it down here on the lower tang of the trigger guard plate. There's a notch right here that this rides in. So I'll catch a corner of it after I get this. There's a hole right here that the hammer spring strut goes into. Put that in the hole there. Catch that corner. And then with your thumb here, ride that hammer spring adjusting plate onto the upper tang of the receiver. Then push everybody to the center. And you want to make sure that the hammer spring adjusting plate is centered on the upper and lower tangs. Move it back and forth as required until it's all centered. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to check the sears, the half cock sear and the full cock sear with the hammer spring installed. Okay, there's half cock. There's full cock. Both sears are working. All right. You can leave it right there. You set that camera block safety to safe. And we're going to install the butt stock. Next thing we're going to install is the ejector. There's a little tab right here that rides in this hole right here. So it sits in a groove and that hole retains it from sliding forward and aft. Here's the groove. So what I do is I just set the ejector down in that groove and then I push it back until that tab falls in the hole. Now we're going to install the breech bolt. Make sure the locking block is all the way down otherwise we won't be able to install the breech bolt, the face of the breech bolt will butt into that locking block. So move it out of the way with your finger. 
pull the hammer down as far as it will go and then slide the breech bolt in until the face of the breech bolt is halfway in the ejection port. Now take your finger lever, it's going to slide up into the breech bolt. Install your finger lever screw. There you go. Now, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. This screw right here holds the loading gate spring on. If that screw comes loose, this loading gate will fall into the receiver. It'll be loose enough to get in the way. When a cartridge comes out of the magazine tube, it'll jam this rifle up. It'll jam it up so that you won't be able to open or close that lever. So make sure that this tight, this screw right here is tight. Now I don't normally take that loading gate spring off so what I use on this screw is some medium strength thread locker blue. Uh, you don't want to use red. Red requires heat to remove the screw to break that red Loctite down. It requires heat. But this right here, it'll hold that screw in place and if you ever have to take it out, you won't have to fight that screw to get the loading gate spring off. A couple other things that will jam up this Marlin is if the trigger guard plate comes loose. This right here, this whole lower assembly right here is the trigger guard plate. It holds the trigger. If this screw and this screw and this screw come loose, allowing the trigger guard plate to move in and out of that receiver, this rifle will jam. So make sure when you inspect your rifle that this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw are tight. I don't lock tight this screw, this screw, and this screw because Every now and then I like to take my rifle apart and give it a good cleaning. So the only screw that I lock tight with the blue thread locker is the loading gate spring screw. I don't lock tight anything else. And the only other two screws are the cartridge carrier screw. Make sure that's tight and the finger lever screw. Make sure that's tight. Put that on half cock. There you go. That's the reassembly of the Marlin 336.